welcome to Death Metal Chronicles. This is Wolf, and I'm on the phone with... Tengu. Tengu, Mr. Ronan. My player. So, uh, you were telling me earlier that you had went to a event called Monster Mania Con, and I'm really interested in this. You... I actually watched the trailer. I watched part of it, at least, for uh, Seventh Day. Um, I wish it was Creative Commons. It's not. At least on the on the website, it doesn't say that it's Creative Commons, so I can't really play it for the viewers, but I'll I'll put in the uh, put it in the show notes um, so people can watch the trailer. Um, it's pretty freaking sweet. I like it. It seems pretty cool. And they got some good uh, good cinematography as well, and they've got some good equipment. Um, I can I can I can just tell with the with the way they're filming at least for the trailer that they have some good depth to field with their uh, with their lenses. So that's pretty freaking sweet. Oh yes, yes. Okay, about uh, Monster Mania. It's um, it's an event that's been going on for the for the past decade in New Jersey, and it's held at the. Um, Crown Plaza Hotel on Route 70 in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, and this past event was held from 7 March until 9 March oh, of wow. this year. So oh, there's going yes. on. What day is today? today yeah, is actually, it okay, just so finished an hour ago. Okay. Yeah, it just ended today. I just, I literally just came back from there. Nice. Um, I was able to go on Sunday, but very often, I, I often stayed the whole weekend. Yeah. Uh, or at the, at the very least on a Saturday because that's. That's when they have big events such as um, the after parties. They had the a a talking forum with some of the um, with some of the guests. Um, oh yeah, you were, my you were first that um, to me earlier as well. I was actually really interested in that. Yes. Um, in addition to that, they had costume contests. Oh, um, they had a couple of people. Yeah, they 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 were they had battling R two D two droids in the uh, main lobby. That's hilarious. And, um, and of course, you know, there's always the regular crew that's dressed up as the uh, undead mutants from the Resident Evil cast. Ah, okay, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, Dave, um, for the past three years that I, that I have been going, I've, I've, um, I've noticed that they had the Resident Evil people. That's, that's pretty much what I call them. And they just go around in different, different costumes and the, number of players, cosplayers that they would have involved would vary at every event, but the but they always had their core cast. So that's really cool. And actually were was, any of the members yeah. of Resident Evil there as well? Uh no, no no, not not in the past recent ones that I've been to. Um and that's that's pretty much about it. But now you mentioned um, to me that the guys uh, from uh Walking Dead were there as well. Yes. Yes. Um, in addition to that, um, they had Lisa and Louise Byrne. Um, they were the Grady twins from The Shining, the creepy twin girls in the first movie. I don't even remember watching that. It's been so long. <laughs> yeah, they were they, they were there. Um, okay. Robert Englund, as everyone knows, who was Freddy Krueger, um, he was there. Um, the Walking Dead cast, um, Chad Riggs, who played Carl, um, Chad L. Coleman, who was Tyrese, Emily... Kenny as Beck, who also played Herschel's daughter, and um, ah. Scott Wilson, Herschel, who we regrettably had been killed off in the series. <laughs> and yeah, he's the personally, older guy, correct? Yeah, he's the um, older guy. Let's see, where's Scott Herschel? I'm actually looking up on their IMDb. I'm not seeing him on here. There's so much cast. There's like, God. There's, <laughs> and these are like all starring people that start. Yeah, obviously it's been going on for. It's they're in the three years now of the show, or is it four? Seasons? Yeah, three three years now. Three years now, and the comic book series has been going on much longer. Whoa, Emily Kinney is smoking. Yeah, she's she's really hot in in the series. She she plays a um, sixteen year old. And she's definitely not 16. I can 
No, she's not. She's she's actually twenty eight years old, five foot five. Five foot four and a half, to be exact. Five foot four and a half, yeah. <laughs> According to IMDB. <laughs> she graduated from she Nebraska smells- Wesleyan University in two thousand and six. She's also an active blogger. That's interesting. Yeah, and she's and she smells nice. Oh, she it became a singer and released her own EP called Blue Toothbrush. Really? That's interesting. Yeah. Blue Toothbrush. Let's see. Oh, she has some stuff on YouTube. Um, I get, oh, she has her own channel on YouTube. That's pretty freaking cool. I didn't know that. Hey, she's quite, she's quite active. Ever since she moved from the basket to New York, she's been very, very active. Yeah, you can buy her stuff on Amazon. Uh, just search Emily Kinney, and uh, you can get Blue Toothbrush for seven bucks for the uh, the physical CD. Huh? I'm pretty impressed. Now, now, what cast did you actually get to meet from uh, Walking Dead? Well, I actually brushed past um, Chad L. Coleman in the bar because the time that I came came on board after taking care of work stuff. I actually came in today on a Sunday in which everything was dying down. Um, the, the line for Scott Wilson was pretty extensively long, and it went out, like, way past the outside the room into the um, parking lot area. He was a very popular character. Oh, really? Um, Chad Coleman, yeah, Chad Coleman was nowhere to be seen. You know, Chandler, Chandler Riggs wasn't there. Same with Emily. Um, when we... Um, when everything was closing down and everyone was grabbing a bite to eat, that's when we saw Chad Coleman and Robert Englund. Oh, um, wow. Chad Coleman, you know, yeah, Chad Coleman was was pretty much, um, I guess you would say, he was cooling down from the um, from the weekend events. Yeah. From running around being busy and stuff and talking to fans and doing a bunch of other things. And, and he's just prepping up for his trip for later because he was on his way out pretty soon enough. Um, Robert Eglin was hanging out at the bar and he was taking pictures with the hotel staff and the event staff and the vendors and, and he even chatted to talk to a few people and was yeah. making Freddy Krueger noises in the bar oh, nice. and um, <laughs> evil clown and evil clown um, noises <laughs> and he was he was just walking around pretending that the utensils were Freddy Krueger claws and it's like like a rah, rah. <laughs> Awesome. Just like making monster movements towards people, he was having like a really good time, and he was sober. It wasn't even drinking yet. <laughs> I'd actually like to interview uh, Chad Coleman. I was trying to find it on on Google. I wasn't able to find it, but he had mentioned in another interview of his that he was in the Navy. I forget what he did. I don't think he was a he. He did some something. I, I don't remember what it was. I'll have to watch the interview again. But he seemed like a pretty interesting guy, and. You know, he actually has some, you know, de- decent skill sets, you know, and then after he got out of the Navy, you know, he's had a very successful career in acting, and, I mean, just looking at his at his stuff, I mean, hell, he's been doing acting since, you know, 92 or probably even earlier than that, and, you know, now he's working on movies, and he's got a film short coming out in Capius Corpus, and... Hell, he's just got all kinds of material. I, I never even realized that. I, I don't really know much of his background, but he seems like a pretty interesting guy. Yeah, he was. Um, he was a Green Hornet, um, Horrible Bosses, and there's a movie coming up in which he plays the role Isaac in this movie called Shoe Dog. Um, there's not much. I haven't seen much on Shoe Dog. So um, Shoe Dog, after a 17 year absence, a drifter named Constantine returns to his hometown of Washington D.C becomes a driver in a dual liquor store robbery. Yeah, that's it. And um, he was a com. Yeah, he was Sam a comedy. Um, all about- yeah. David Zayas. Yeah, he was in, uh, in mm-hmm. Dexter. He's in there, so that's pretty cool. Oh, cool! And Chris Christopherson, uh, the older guy in the Blade movies. Yeah. And P. Diddy's going to be in there? Dude, I'm totally watching this. This is hilarious. P. Diddy is going to be there. I love how his name is Sean Combs. And then his name in in the thing is going to be Randolph. 
as Sean P. Diddy Combs, formerly known as <laughs> the artist. <laughs> wow. Yeah, he was also in, um, he was in two episodes, and it's sunny, and it's always sunny in Philadelphia, back in 2010. Actually gotten into that show i don't really watch like the sitcom kind of stuff it's funny and all but i, I just i can't really do it it's not my thing but i i kind of got hooked on it because myself being the heavy metal gothic guy from philadelphia yeah and every time i watch the show especially during deployment that's where i got a lot of people involved into watching the show yeah. and i can point out different parts of philadelphia city itself so just watching the show, and I think to myself, oh, I know that place. Yep, that's Ben Franklin Bridge. That's, that's South Street. Oh, cool. That's this diner. So it's, it's, very, it's very Philadelphia. It's, and it's cool they're using the actual, uh, like, using stock footage that, you know, some production team went out, or filming team went out there and actually, you know, done their homework on Philadelphia and shot a bunch of stuff. As opposed to when you watch different things where, like, oh, this is New York City, but obviously it's fucking Cleveland or Detroit or some shithole that, you know, the only reason why they filmed there was because they had to, <laughs> you know, like, to be able to get, you know, a yeah. footage. So that's actually kind of cool. I never knew that. Yeah, I remember one time I was watching Rumble in the Bronx and with Jackie Chan's characters in New York City, and then all of a sudden he's walking, then you see these mountains that seen in Hong Kong, not in New York. <laughs> that's awesome that's really cool so now uh who else did you get to meet uh yeah you, you so you you gave me the uh the link to uh seventh day um tell tell us yeah, uh, tell the viewers a little bit about uh that that movie and kind of who uh who they are okay it's a independent horror movie it's um, it was pr it was um, produced by uh, Dervis Film. Um, the cast includes um, Mark Sanders, with um, Michael Brecker, Josh Davidson, Daisy Gibbs. Uh, the music's by Paul Joyce. Special effects by Kaylee Brown. The um, the director is Jason Koch, and the writer is Mark Leek. Um, Jason, Jason Koch, I bumped into him at okay. the MonsterCon. He just, I was just looking at the film. I was just drawn to it. And he just walked up, started talking about it, gave me this little advertisement dice thingy. And, and he gave me the um, DVD, which I bought for 10 bucks. Oh. And, and it's going to be on Amazon, released on Amazon, I think, for like 24 or something like that. Oh sweet, that's really cool. Yeah, and um, under the IM, IMDb, um, it's given the rating of seven point three. Um, it has like pretty pretty good reviews. It's it's a very it's been considered a very nice uh, independent horror. Um, different um, different companies um, in the horror genre different magazines and stuff have given it pretty good ratings as well. Awesome. Um, Matt Choco from um, HorrorEnthusiast.com um, had said that it had the wit of American Psycho with the creepiness of Henry Portrait of Serial Killer. Um, Doug Tilly of Daily Grindhouse um, wrote that you'll need a long bath to wash off all the grind. Seven Days delivers the goods for fans of cinematic terror. <laughs> nice. um, the part of the story is about... Um, a self-proclaimed pervert murderer, and he's a hopeless romantic. Um, the guy's name is Alan Dean, and he's on a seventh-day journey to discover his true love, and he's torn between a waitress that he likes and his first true love, which is killing people. <laughs> That's perfect. And the guy is very delusional. He spends his time his free time taking selections for killing and dismemberment. And he tells the story that he's doing some recording crew stuff yeah. with, um, 
with some type of jelly character. And these people don't exist. It's, this is all in his mind, by the way. Ah, okay. That adds some good depth to it. I'm actually pretty interested so that, in, the, um, in this gentleman um, and Jason. I mean, he's got some... Uh, some of the actors that are actually in in the movie um, have been in a lot of different films as well. I, I saw some of their... Uh, some of the different people in there, and they've been in like 30 or more films, some some chick named Christine uh, Baron. I guess she's been... Baron, in, yeah. I mean, she looks very pretty, and she's been in a State of Play. Um, I, I don't know much of these shows, but it, she does have a, a fairly decent uh, Twitchers. I've never heard of that. Bazooka's the movie. Um, is this the safe movie with What's-His-Face? Uh, no, but she, she's actually got some good stuff. I mean, I, I think she's actually going to make a, a lot of more decent films. She's yes, and um, there's this other actress. Yes, there's this other actress, um, Jennifer Jennifer, in that film. Um, she's well known for her role in Teen Wolf, which has been popular on MTV. Oh, okay. It's, I guess you could say it's a more gritty werewolf version of twilight oh, okay. okay that's the best way that's the best way to describe it yeah i'm more of a being human fan so being human what is that Be, being human it's um well there's two versions there's the europe there's the british version yeah. and the um north american version and i'm a fan of both but i've been watching the north american version on sci-fi channel very frequently okay um the base story, it's a werewolf, vampire, and ghost that live together in the same house. Interesting. Um, the ghost, um, her name's Sally, and she was murdered in that home. So she's kind of stuck there, and she's supposed to go through this door, which is the portal to go to heaven, and she never took it. The vampire, and the vampire works as a nurse, Aiden, that's his name, and he's been living... He's been living in the Boston area ever since the Revolutionary War day. And he's trying to come to grip with things. He's trying to be more human, live an everyday lifestyle, reduce his blood drinking. And he's having a tough time about it. And and his roommate, um, who is a werewolf who works in the same hospital as him. Yeah. He's, um, well, he was, Bitten by a, um, he was bitten by a um, werewolf in which he was, um, of course, turned into. Um, Josh, that's the character's name. The actor's name is Sam Huntington. Megan Roth is Sally Malik. She's the ghost. Sam Whit Whitworth, he's Avian Waite. He's the, um, he's the vampire. He's the vampire nurse. Wait, so this and, has um, been going on for four years. Yes. See, I, I've been deployed Four so years. much, and I haven't watched regular TV in so long. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even know where to look for new shows these days, other than IMDb. Um, interesting. See, I'm gonna put this in the show notes too. I mean, I've never even heard of it at all. This, this is pretty interesting. Yeah, it's it's actually very very good. I've, I've been a big fan ever since um, it came on sci-fi. I was watching the original British version on BBC America. Oh, really? After, um, yeah, after Doctor Who. And, and I got hooked on it. And then they came out with the North American version. And I was um, very familiar with um, Sam Whitworth's work because of um, myself being the video game geek that I am. Um, Sam Whitworth played the, um, the Secret Apprentice, Darth Vader's Secret Apprentice. And um, in one of the Star Wars games, um, the name is it's The Force Unleashed 1 and 2. Yeah, they use his likeness and his voice in the game. So, so I, that's how I became very familiar with Sam Whitworth's um, work. Oh, and it's, it's okay. It's actually licensed by Lucasfilms. That's interesting. Yeah, so this is going to be the very last um, season of being human. For, um, be, for, for being human, which I'm. Which, which a lot of us fans are very, very sad about. 
because we because the British version lasted so long, but the North American version will be coming to an end soon enough. Yeah, they'll probably have to keep it going if, too, if so many people uh, get pissed off at them. Obviously, CW has been doing really well with Supernatural. I mean, hell, if Supernatural got more people watching than the freaking State of the Union, th- that's why they're going on for their ninth or tenth season. Who even knows anymore? But so uh, let's do some. Yeah, I was... Let's do uh, let's do a super duper funny contractor story. Go, Tango. Okay. Well, well, I, I walked into the um, in the bathroom. I went to take a dump. And, and all of a sudden, I heard two voices coming out of the same stall. And they, it was very, very quiet. Yeah. And I started recognizing the, the voices. It was um, there's one guy, Bob McClellan, and this other guy, um, it was named Jack Rawlings. He was our roommate. And they, they've been kind of acting kind of funny. And then when I heard the two of them in the same stall, and I was thinking, well, maybe because Jack's an older fellow and he's not exactly the best of health for the thing to be, and maybe he needs help. And then I'm just being the creepy guy just listening in because this is very train wreckish, and myself being being attracted to train wrecks anyway. So I just started to listen in, and in a very creepy way, I was intrigued and at the same time bothered because because it started to sound like there was some unnatural human acts being performed <laughs> and then and then my um, one of my other roommates came in and he goes hey we are almost done we're all waiting for you to go to breakfast uh-huh. and then the guy they just and then I had an answer says yeah yeah hold on let me wipe and then all of a sudden like the, the talking stopped <laughs> and then and then they they both came out just one at a time, uh-huh. out of the um, out of the bathroom. I mean, out of the stall. So I'm I'm just looking through the um, the little opening on the door, and Jack comes out and he starts washing his hands, and then um, and then a little bit at a time. So I'm thinking like, well, maybe Bob's just gonna hang out a little bit, and then I um, I walk out after flushing and I start washing my hands, and Bob pops out and he's giving me the look of shame. At that point, <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm just looking at the sort of mirror and goes, "Hey, what's up?" In the very typical Jersey fashion, and he just he had the look of shame and <laughs> and he didn't even bother washing his hands. He just he just left. He he just left, and and the two of them walked ahead. And there's like a whole bunch of them, a bunch of guys waiting for me. And there's there's my friend Logan, and they're like, "Hey, um, what did you do to those two?" Uh huh. Because they, cause they, uh, they all look like that, that they lost all color, and then all of a sudden you came out. What did you do in there? <laughs> so I told the guys the story, and they're like, oh, no, 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 no. And they said, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Bro loved him, man. That's just freaking perfect. Yeah. The well, funniest, you know, the funniest it, thing with the military and, and contracting in general is that even if you were a full-blown, you know, gay dude, or whether you, you know, just had an inkling for you just like humans, you don't care what they are as long as they're a human, and you can't be that person. Now, now the military is fighting with this, and I, I couldn't imagine if you were just a person who liked humans, if you're a bi chick or a bi dude. Or you just every now and then you wanted to do stuff. I couldn't imagine how that would be for that person. Because obviously, with the military in general, it's a very, you know, things are this way and it can't be another way. And if you like other things, then you're bad or you should be, I don't know, shit canned or something or smoke checked. I mean, this is, and it's something that the military is dealing with right now. And also the fact that, you know, there are more and more people coming out within the military who will eventually command forces, <laughs> you know, uh, and that's going to be interesting. Well, like the um, gay guys and gay gals existed in the military for a very long time. Even even when I was, when I first started as enlisted soldier in 1988, 
it, it was just there, but it was something that we never talked about yeah. out in the open. We just know who was what and what they did. And as long as the individual does their job and doesn't doesn't make anything a pressing matter, we really didn't care. Yeah. It, that, there was a form that back then that stated, are you a homosexual? And either you answer yes or no. And if you answered yes, then you don't go in. Really? And yeah, that, that was it. And then they... Then when Bill Clinton became president, approximately seven months after he had taken office, that question was stricken. Really? Yes. I didn't know that I, I was, in the um, It's pretty interesting. Yeah. And um, it was 1993 around, no, 1994, January. And I was working something in um, Temple University's ROTC program. I was a um, brand new second lieutenant. He was in reserves. I just came back from from officer basic course branch armor, learning how to be a tank platoon leader. And I was doing stuff um, with the ROTC program to help pay for some master's degree class at Temple University. Yeah. And um, so here I am. I'm working in ROTC, and the colonel comes in and says, okay, Gary, uh, Go out, look at these forms, and if anything that has anything with um, homosexuality, I want you to white it out. Really? So, yeah. So I, I spent I spent a good four hours just shuffling through forms, just whiting out any reference with asking about homosexuality. <laughs> wow. That was that was like the longest paperwork shuffle I ever had to do in my life. What's really even more, I think, interesting is that our generation now, Generation X, Y, we don't give a fuck, uh, we are changed generation, I guess, <laughs> really doesn't yeah, generation care don't give a fuck. about social norms these days. And even within, like, Christian groups that I know of, you know, I, me as a Christian... I find that it's interesting because I surround myself with, I don't really care who they are just as long as they're people. And I, I don't use my, my religion or my faith to use violence against people. And there's more of a libertarian inkling within our generation, which is do whatever the fuck you want as long as you don't hurt other people. And yet it still hasn't parasitically gone within the, mil the military and the government in general. Because, you know, we've all known for the however long that Hillary Clinton is probably a lesbian. Who gives a shit? No one really cares. But yet, you can't just be a lesbian captain or a gay, gay dude private in the military and have benefits for the person that you're with. I, I still am confused by this. Like, I... <laughs> I really don't understand how our generation is, is approving of people, but yet our government is not representing half of the population, you know? Well, it, it's something, like I said, that, that's something that existed a long time. It's just one of those things that no one ever really talked about until it became an issue. Yeah. And and that's just it. And then when, when people started coming out with gender issues. Um, for example, there's a um, transsexual athlete that wanted to compete as a woman in CrossFit. Nice. But could not compete as a woman because the individual was born as a man and still has man muscles and all that stuff. So it'll be at a... Yeah, um, but the CrossFit, that doesn't even matter at all, dude. <laughs> it should be yeah, neutral that's... in the first place. Because some of those women, they will beat the shit out of any dude in front of them. Yeah, I've I've been um I've, I've been doing CrossFit for two years now, and and even with that aside, I I I'm struggling doing the girl weight. Now you so. had mentioned to me that when you were deployed, you were doing CrossFit. Um, if you want to mention the place that you were deployed, you can you can mention it and uh, kind of tell the viewers yes. about the uh, the program that you were with out there. Yes, I, w I was at um, Camp Leatherneck CrossFit in southern Afghanistan. Um, I was a member of it since I started my deployment in uh, March of 
2012 and up until March 2013. Describe the facility, um, by the way. <laughs> oh, uh, Leatherneck? <laughs> or, or, yeah, Describe the, the CrossFit thing they've got going there. It's like a coliseum. Explain this to the viewers. Okay, well, the whole CrossFit program, it's a combination of powerlifting, cardiovascular, which includes running and rowing, and gymnastic movements, which are push-ups, squats, um, jumping, um, using Olympic rings for a variety of movements, such as ring rows, dips, um, muscle-ups, in which you're suspended, and you pull yourself up, and then you do, and you push off, and, and you're, you're pretty much suspended with your hands up in the air. You know? So pretty much a combination of all that. Uh, originally, it was designed to help Olympic athletes in the U.S. Um, in the U.S. gymnastic team to get fit very quickly, but not injure themselves in the process. Yeah. And that that was the original premise of it, because the founder of CrossFit was a former um, a coach for gymnastics, and it, it turned out to be a very good program. And then eventually, it caught on to different exercise groups, and it grew into the into the group that, that it has become right now. Um, there has been a lot of um, a lot of likes and dislikes with the with the whole CrossFit genre of exercise. Yeah. Um, that's that's mainly because the because um, it's pretty much you go to a seminar over the weekend for coaching and then you get certified. Whereas many many fitness trainers they go through so many weeks and months to try to get ready at this level. Um, there are people who actually got to college and, and get degrees in exercise physiology, exercise science. And then they work as trainers and physical therapists yeah. and they teach people how to exercise properly. And then here comes CrossFit with someone who got certified at a weekend seminar and bam, there you go. And, and they're running successful gyms. And they're getting more clientele than everyone else. And they're like, what the hell is going on? Nice. And, there, and there's also the, um, when you're not too careful with CrossFit, because it's very highly intense. And, and the ability, the, the chances of getting injuries, just like anything else, it, it's pretty high. Because it's very, it's very strong movements. Um, on the other hand, if you understand your, um, your limits, and you know, you know what to do and what not to do. And plus, if you pay attention to the coaches when they tell you to drop the weight, do this, just do it this way because this is the proper form to do this. Yeah. And you won't, you won't get hurt at all. Yeah. You know, not, but also keep in mind if you do it too many times, you're going to fall under overtraining, which, which happened to me overseas. I. I started to um, hurt my elbow one day, and, and that was from doing a lot of CrossFit. Yeah. But then again, I was doing it five, six days a week in Afghanistan, and really there's nothing else to do. And then the only thing you can do in your free time is is um, watch movies and work out. And I was pretty with no discretion. I went through there for a day, and I saw you know this Coliseum O CrossFit, and you know there was a hundred people, you know, doing these, you know, doing the whole CrossFit workout and everything in the facility, which is amazing. I mean, and they literally had built it themselves out of fucking Connexes and, and there was like nets and there's just hundreds of people. It was amazing. And it was just something really cool that I'd never seen before where, you know, it was a bunch of people all doing all the same movements and the same type of workout and kind of getting a cohesive fitness mindset which is a lot different oh, than any other sport that I've seen. Yes, the uh, but CrossFit is also diff CrossFit, but CrossFit differs from the mainstream global gym setting is that there's a very strong community and it's a very Spartan workout. Um, yeah. Also, you don't have to um, what drew me to CrossFit is that I don't have to wait X amount of time to work on something else because someone else is using that barbell or someone's using that 
that dumbbell or treadmill. Um, everyone has their own set of weights, their own boxes to jump on, every, their own Olympic rings to work on. Because what CrossFit basically is, you're supersetting from one group of exercise to another. And, and you're just going through that whole routine, and sometimes you'll be finished within five to six minutes, and sometimes it'll take you 45 minutes to an hour to do one routine, depending on what that routine is. And yeah. you get it done, and, you're, and then that's it. And plus, the um, CrossFit community is very international, so no matter what, what box, what gym you go to, the, the gyms are called boxes. And um, no matter what box you go to, everything is exactly the same. You're always going to do these movements this way and that way. Um, everything's going to be like this. Um, the way you set up your Olympics rings is this. There's always going to be a rope climb station. And, and what's really great, especially if you have taken a physical fitness test like I had to in the past, it really helps you get geared up for it. Yeah. Um, I, I finished... I became two and a half minutes faster than my run time when I took the um, Army PT test. I maxed out my push-ups, and I came close to maxing out my sit-ups, but didn't. Um, I missed it by, by two repetitions because I had to go and take a shit. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm pretty impressed with uh, the, the whole concept of functional workouts. I don't necessarily myself do most of the uh, the CrossFit stuff, but I, I do like the, the, the concepts that it just makes sense. You know, when you can do functional it, it makes, activities, yeah. as, as opposed to, like, the competitional CrossFit stuff, which I, has its place, but at least the functional aspects of, of CrossFit just makes more sense to me than, than just going and, and uh, I don't know, doing a bunch of arm curls or some shit like that. It, that stuff just is really confusing to me. Yeah, that's that, that's what I love about CrossFit. It's very functional, and you you can do the routine at any other gym. You don't have to go to a a box certified by CrossFit yeah. to do it. Um, all you have to do is just it's just basic exercise that's out there. You just uh, you just have to do it, and two percent in between stuff. And you can't do that, then you can't do that. You just do what you can, and then you move on to the next one. Just keep it functional, and, and you just rest when you have to, and that's any, it. Uh, advice just, for uh, CrossFitters out there? Well, listen to your coaches. Your coaches will take care of you, and don't do more than your means. That's all. Not doing more than your means, as in what? As as in as in if if you could physically push seventy five pounds, and you want to shoot for 95 pounds that's all well and good but just stick to 75 pounds because eventually you'll you'll move up in weight and intensity once you get proper form and your strength will just kick in yeah I, 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 i've been hearing a lot of different like um i might call it propaganda but propagandizing crossfit as in this is dangerous because this physical fitness trainer says so as opposed to just being smart about how you're working out where, you know, if you can do a functional weight of, you know, a hundred pound deadlift, instead of going for the 200 pound deadlift, maybe you should just try for 120 pounds and then work up to the weight that you want to do. It really does sound to me that a lot of the, the propaganda around CrossFit is people over either over exercising number one or overworking a specific muscle group by doing too much weight. Exactly. That's 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 all what it is. They yeah, actually got a couple of pictures on uh, on on Google uh, for. Camp Living. I'm not actually going to use most of them. Anybody can go look them up if they want. Most of these aren't Creative Commons, so uh, people can uh, go search them themselves. Um, it's a big pain in the ass, by the way, trying to find <laughs> um, Creative Commons uh, pictures. Um, 
Although I do, I do uh, certainly like this one picture of this uh, this uh, naval criminal investigator uh, out there. She's a beautiful specimen to look at. I tell you what. <laughs> Some NCIS investigator out there in uh, Camp Leatherneck doing her her gig. Oh yeah, Camp Leatherneck. Oh joy. So you got anything else for uh, the viewers out there? I'm saying we covered CrossFit, Monster Mania. Um, there's going to be a Monster Mania this coming, this coming August in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. So keep a watch out for that if you're ever in the Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Western New Jersey area. Yeah, how far is um, Cherry Hill away from uh, Philadelphia itself? Uh, depending what part of Philadelphia, it's between 15 to 30 minutes. Oh, okay, so it's kind of like just across the border or something like that? Yes, just oh. across the border. That's pretty sweet. Why do they have in uh, Philadelphia area of all places? It's cheaper to do it in the Crown Plaza Hotel in New Jersey. <laughs> uh, just cost, really? <laughs> yeah, just cost. I was just kind of confused about why I would be there instead of, say, like, New York City or, you know, I don't know, Georgia or something. Now that Georgia's the home of, you know, Walking Dead for the past four years. Yeah, well, there's some, um, Georgia has their own events, such as Dragon Con, and they have their, um, their own Comic Con over there as well. So, so that kind of covers that gap. Um, Dragon Con is pretty, pretty huge. It's like super, it's pretty much Comic-Con on steroids, but in Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. They have like um, Gates, Dungeons, and Dragons type events um, in addition with the, um, with horror movie and science fiction stuff. Uh, They have comic book specific things going on and the costume contest and you have the Dragon Con Parade, which, which people, participants in costume, they just walk around the um, area in their costumes and props, and and it's a really big thing for the Atlanta residents. They just like watching all that stuff. That's really cool. I'd definitely like to check it out. Hopefully I'll be around if I'm not deployed by then. Um, it sounds like a lot of fun to be able to meet all those different people and kind of get an idea of the, the different stuff within the industry of of uh, horror and, and just you know cool different movies and stuff like that. Well, it was awesome. Yeah, to even have. Jagu. I'm uh, I'm gonna get editing uh, all of this. Uh, our our things probably gonna get cut off soon. Uh, I, I, my card that I've got formatted is only a two gig card, so it can't really handle more than a more than an hour's worth of uh, of, of footage. So. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Just to let you know that Dragon Con, do you have membership that covers like all four days of panels, events, demonstrations, concerts, performances, and contests? And um, snacks in the um, consulate as available. Nice. And, and there are exceptions, of course, that, that apply. And the membership rates, um, I guess, starting in um, May, you could start, there are $100 from May 16th. And then it, it comes to 115 in July, starting through July 18th, and then um, and then $130 from August 15th up until door until up to the door when they start opening Dragon Con. Nice. So, and um, DragonCon.org, that's where you could get more information on that. Great. And do you have a, a website or a, a something that people get in contact with with you online? Um, I'm on Facebook, um, Tengu Ronin. Awesome. T-E-N-G-U dot R-O-N-I-N? Yes. Just the space, R-O-N-I-N. Outstanding. Well, it was good talking with you, buddy. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to get some more content out with you on uh, on Death Metal Chronicles. Yes. And more creepy contractor stories. <laughs> 
Those are always the oh. best. <laughs> yes, I I have plenty more, plenty more. <laughs> That's perfect. It was good talking with you, buddy. Okay, later. Peace.